What's up, Paler Hackers? Clark back again. Today, we got another episode of the video podcast. Quality's working on it. We're getting there. We're upping it every week, but uh, I got to upgrade my computer so it can process the HD video. So thank you for bearing in us with two or three weeks or however long it takes us to upgrade fully. But we got the videos and nonverbals are super important. So I'm stoked you're watching this because you get the full picture, you get the full form of communication. A lot gets lost when it's just two voices talking over the internet. A lot is gained when you see two people uh, conversing and, and, and what they're actually meaning. So today we got my main saving dinner mama, Leanne Ely, here today to talk to us about saving dinner, infrared, saving dinner, uh, apparently getting your alarm going off, infrared saunas, shopping on Amazon, and sea school how you can cook and learn to master the skill and impress your friends. Simple, easy tips as well throughout this whole call. So, PaylorHacks.com is the place to be. Uh, blogs, forums, articles, everything that makes your life better, makes you healthier. ClarkDanger.com for me. And of course, YouTube, just search Clark Danger. I'm right here. All right, let's go see what Leanne has to say. All Bye, right, Paleo Hackers, with me today is Leanne Ely. She has been saving dinner for 12 plus years, teaches how to go paleo without going crazy. Leanne, welcome back to the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me, Clark. Is that a sauna in the background? <laughs> it is. It's a far infrared sauna. Oh, man. Is I, that cool? I love you. That's awesome. That's great. I I, I'm a huge sauna fan. Time. I'm t- I'm telling you that thing just makes me feel like a new woman. Yeah. So, okay. So what's the difference between infrared and normal? Um. Well, the far infrared works on it heats the core more than just the outside, and that that's the big that's the big, big differentiator. And when the core is heated like that, it uh-huh. it promotes healing. Okay. So it's, it's a big difference. One is more you know cosmetic. This one is is a healer. Okay. So it kind of gets. Uh, for lack of a better word, inside of you and heats you up from the inside out rather than just trying to get the skin all hot and sweaty. Absolutely. It's, it's fantastic. It's, um, it, I'm a huge believer. Okay. How long have you had it? I've had it since I think probably about six months now. Okay. Okay, cool. I bought it on Amazon Really? and, and put it together with a girlfriend and two bottles of wine. (laughs) <laughs> good for you <laughs> little hgtv yeah. night yeah i'm serious it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome okay i gotta look into that and and so you've had it for six months you use it daily and what's been kind of like the biggest or you know weekly or whatever what's been the biggest changes you've noticed more energy you know a lot more detox. energy yeah uh, yeah the detox is good and it's really good for helping you to really sweat um because sometimes you know you just don't get you don't get the sweat going and and that's that's a huge problem. But I've noticed that for me, it's just it makes me feel better. It makes me sleep better. All of it. Yeah. Everything is great. Yeah. And and do you heat it to like 180 or can you get a little no, lower no. with infrared? No, you go to 140. 140. Okay. Yeah. Because I go to just a, no, I a low boil. Yeah, <laughs> low boil. Well, I go to like an LA Fitness, and the sauna is. I was just talking to Abel James about this, kind of my pass or fail mark of if I've right. worked out that day. So I go there and I do a twenty minute sauna every day, and it's normally one eighty. It's the best part of my day. Make some friends, you know, chat it up, have a little uh, guy time in the sauna. But I I love the sauna, so that's why I'm so fascinated by it. Um, oh, that's awesome! But and Amazon, you know, yeah, you got to get it Amazon, and if you put it in your office, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll look into that with the infrared sauna. Anyway, great way to start the show with a plug for Amazon saunas. I know, um, right? We should have an affiliate link or something. We, sh- we really should. <laughs> we sell like one or two of those and we each get like 300 bucks. I love that. <laughs> it's our new strategy. Well, it's true though, because, um, you know, I've been researching saunas and everything and I mean, the skin is an organ of detoxification and so sweating... <laughs> your, your biggest one and so sweating is actually super healthy and promotes health benefits and i think people are afraid to sweat now you know it's gross or it's not sanitary or they think there's something wrong with sweating and you know i've, I've even talked to my friends that are women and they say they won't work out because they hate sweating and oh, it's, come it's on. i don't know i mean maybe it's something in seattle <laughs> but. maybe it is it's a seattle thing okay i'll take i'll buy that 
<laughs> no. Maybe it is though. But the sweating is really beneficial and you like pull stuff out. Yeah, you I mean you can almost feel it, you know what I mean? It's it's like you're when you're all done, especially when you've when you've had a really good sauna and you're all done and you get out of there, even I mean you can feel it when you work out, but especially with the sauna, when you leave and you and you take a, a, a shower yeah. or whatever, you could just you just feel like you've really done something hugely beneficial for your body. You feel great. So I know that's more of a external, almost lifestyle thing you can do to make yourself healthy. I know saving dinner is all about cooking and taking things in and, mm-hmm. and becoming healthy um, with your work and what you do. But do you have any other lifestyle, almost non-cooking related hacks or protocols that you do to uh, really make yourself healthier? Hmm. Um, yeah, there's some, several things that I do that, that are really helpful. One is, um, it's, it's not really cooking, but it's drinking green tea because I find that's, that's really super helpful. It's, um, green tea is full of phytosomes that, that, um, help with fat, um, metabolism and what have you. I'll do anything for my metabolism because okay. I've got thyroid, um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So okay. it's, everything's a struggle. So that green tea is, is a one big help. Yeah. Drinking a lot of water is a lot of help. Um, you know, you hear that all the time, but it's really tough to drink as much water as you're supposed to drink because really, honestly, you know, you're just constantly going back and forth to the bathroom. So sure. that's, you know, kind of a thing. The other thing, one of the things that I've also started to do is really um, stretching and flexibility is something that um, I think it's one of the three pillars of fitness. Um, cardiovascular, of course, muscle strength, but flexibility is one of those things that's oftentimes not taken very seriously. And, you know, you lose flexibility. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I was noticing that in my boot camp the other, um, on Monday, and I was noticing how my flexibility just seems to really, you know, it's, it's not, it's not what it used to be in because everybody was, you know, we we're doing all these different exercises and I just couldn't, uh, do it. So I was just, that's, that's been on, new on my list of, is putting flexibility and doing flexibility exercises, yoga, downward dog, you know, all the different exercises and putting myself through those paces. And that seems to be already, I can notice the difference. Um, Mm. And one more thing, and you'll love it. I'm sure you're probably into this as well, but massage. I do um, massages at least once a month. Yeah, definitely. I love what you're talking about with flexibility though, because you brought up a good point in that, you know, we're doing all these strength training and boot camps and resistance training and we're shortening our muscles and Mm -hmm. everything's contracting and we don't really give ourselves a time to relax or expand or lengthen them. And so it sounds like you're kind of being more proactive with dedicating a few sessions or focusing on one of the pillars of, of strength or uh, health as you call it and lengthening yourself. Well, we have to do things that are, you know, if we're, if we're going to, like if you're strength training, you're either pushing or you're pulling. So you're counteracting those two things. But at the same time, you're right. I mean, you're, you're working on that muscle, but you're not working on lengthening that muscle. You're also not working on the whole flexibility of your joints, your yeah. back, your spine. I mean, all of that. And, and that all comes into play. And we don't do those exercises. We sit so much. Right. Um, you know, and that's one of the other things too. I've been very aware that I sit a lot, so I need to get up more. And I'm fortunate that my office is downstairs. So, you know, I don't, I purposely don't have things downstairs. I make myself go up into the kitchen and, you know, have to climb those stairs to, to do things. So that, that's another, you know, just a, not, I don't know so much of a hack, but I mean, it's a purposeful hack of, of not having the convenience of, of everything right here. How do you feel about standing, like standing workstations and all that stuff? I know that's getting a lot of press in the real food community blogosphere. It's been been getting a lot of press since, you know, sitting is the new smoking TED Talk and and all the the studies. And I think we sit more than we sleep now. And, you know, it it lowers, I don't know, 20% off your life, some people say, depending on what kind of job you have. And do you incorporate any sort of standing workstation or are you just a fan of moving around more? I'm just a fan of moving around more, although, you know, I, I, I have drank the Kool-Aid, though, as well. And I have a little stand, you know, for my, for my uh, desktop to go up, because I have a desktop and a laptop and everything, to, you know, low, make it go up. Yeah. But you know what? 
at the end of the day, I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. So what I've taken to doing, because downstairs in my office, I have sort of a kitchenette, which is a has a little countertop, and I'll take my laptop and put it up there and stand sometimes to do, you know, do some of my work. My laptop, of course, is in sync with my with my desk desktop, so it, sure. that works as well. It's just hard to be, you know, it's hard to be that focused to do yeah. those absolutely every single day. I mean, I'd have to have a checklist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Sitting, go stand up for a minute, you know. I like that you're honest about it too, you know. It's you you hard. bought something and then I think a lot of people get this, they're so motivated and they want to buy something and then they buy it and they don't use it again and it sits and collects dust. Like I've seen those standing workstations with a treadmill for like four grand on Amazon and I'm just saying like I would – honestly probably use that maybe three or four times and then it'd be an expensive well, it would, because it would decor. be hard i know there's people who do that though yeah. I've, I've, I've actually spoken with them <laughs> really like they, I, they work and walk yeah they work and walk but you know it really is it's, it's like trying to chew gum and walk at the same time it really is tough yeah and uh, i think i think it really it requires in my opinion it requires too much because when I sit down to work, I want to sit down to work. I want to get busy on it. Now I can see doing social media on it or I can see doing yeah. some other things. But on the other hand, you know, if you're going to get down and get busy, you really need to hunker down and not be thinking, fall on your face on the treadmill, you know? I had for a while <laughs> it, in my college dorm room picked up one of those um, back in university, one of those side of the road kind of old treadmills. And I converted oh. it into one of those standing workstations. Did you really? <laughs> It was the hardest thing ever, Leanne. It was like I would be walking and so distracted of so many different things. My brain was processing like five different things. It felt like I was stressed out. It felt like my stress levels were going up. I get that. Yeah. It was like juggling like uh, all these balls and then you add in another two and you have to focus on two more things now. And so I think that multitasking kind of gets in the way. I think it's I think it's too hard. Yeah. I I just uh, no, thank you. So I know. Right now, you're pretty busy with putting out some stuff on saving dinner, and and um, you got a bunch of different programs going on. What's kind of your mission for the listener at home right now, who's um, heard us rambling about saunas and workstations, and they want to get to know kind of what you're passionate about and where your work centers? Um, what's your mission with saving dinner and the work that you do? Well, you know, at the end of the day, when you <laughs> when you just start to think about what health is anyway, health is what you put into your body. Whether that's food, stress, you know, whatever, it's it's what you put in and it's what you put out. Exactly, that I mean, that's how it works. And if we can get a handle, getting a handle on our nutrition means that we get a handle on our food, which means we have to cook. We have to be able to pick up the food, uh, pick it out. We have to purchase it. We need to bring it home. We able to know how to prepare it, and we need to know how to cook it. And we just can't do that. Um, just willy nilly. There has to be a, a rhyme or reason. And you know, I, I talk to women all the time. I get emails all the time. And oh, I've been doing this almost 15 years now. Hmm. And so yeah. what I hear over and over and over again repeatedly was, you know, I, my mom didn't cook. I was, you know, basically raised on hot pockets and you know microwave popcorn. And I don't know how to cook. Yeah. And if they see this cooking, you know, conundrum as being something that's two things. One as complicated as brain surgery or secondly, it's as beneath them and it's as akin to cleaning a toilet. Hmm. And both of those extremes and, and all the, you know, iterations in between are all completely wrong and off base. Yeah. I just, I just kind of want to bring that back and not just bring the family back to the dinner table, but also bring people into their kitchens and make friends with those large appliances, you know, and, and understand how to operate a, a kitchen because this is how you have a handle on your health. Absolutely. I think you mentioned it, but I love asking people who specialize in a specific area this question, and that is, what do you think is the biggest misconception in the work you do with saving dinner and cooking um, or just cooking in general? Like when you think of cooking, people ask you frequently ask questions. What's the thing you see and you say, oh, man, that's a big myth or misconception? That eating healthy is expensive. Hmm. Quite to the contrary, it is not. That is a huge myth and I think it needs to be busted wide open. When you take – now, 
you might not be able to get this the primo most you know hand fed pasture pastured you know livestock you might not be able to get the best ever but when you take like a fast food meal yeah. and for a family of four it's going to cost you about 20 bucks i can do a meal for a family of four with a a chicken a whole chicken some potatoes and broccoli and i can do it for half of that so which one's more expensive the fast food yeah. and it's way more costly in the long run that's so true so, i mm-hmm. um was with on this uh work trip with uh some volunteers went through the fast food joint first time i had fast food in over a year or two and um i ate it i didn't even try and make it healthy i just went for it and Mm -hmm. um but i what i was surprised about wasn't like the low quality of it or what i got but was the price It, it was the fact that this thing was so expensive i had heard and thought that fast food was um dirt cheap 99 cents yeah Yeah. 99 cents and i can get things for five bucks and a complete meal and oh that's why everyone eats it it's cheap it's good and it's fast no this thing was like eight or nine dollars it was the most ridiculous thing ever and i'm I'm just looking at it and i'm thinking is this worth nine dollars well absolutely not from a nutrient standpoint but even just from uh, what you get like you said i can go to trader joe's or whatever and a whole foods and get some ingredients put in a slow cooker and have that for three meals and fill Mm -hmm. me up way more for nine bucks and so i like what you said about the myth being the expense yeah that's huge and i I really want to blow that up because every time i hear it i just make it drives me crazy because it's just not true i mean you can buy a bag you can go to the grocery store right now and buy you know five pounds of potatoes for a dollar 99 i keep going to potatoes potatoes are easy and cheap uh, maybe not the most nutrient dense vegetable on the planet, yeah. but certainly it's a, a baked potato. I'd rot way better over, you know, some fries yeah. um, for a dollar ninety nine, a big five pound bag, or for a dollar ninety nine, an order of fries. Come on. Yeah, and so when people say they don't have the money or they don't have the expense, what do you point them towards for cooking on a budget? Just going with. You know, just go, stay away from all the package stuff. We should all stay away from the package stuff. Listen, I'm going to tell you something that I think is a real um, uh, uh, enlightening for everybody. That if we all ate the same way, if we all ate produce and meat, chicken, fish, if we all ate that, we're there. That's, that's for everybody. That's how you save money. That's how you save your health. And if you do have extra money in your budget, you can back it up and you can say, okay, I'm going to make sure that all the produce is organic. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting wild fish, et cetera. You know, you know the drill. The point is, is that we all need to be eating the same things. Our, our, our biology doesn't change. Our biology has been the same for thousands and thousands of years. We know what we need to eat and that's what's the cheapest thing to eat. No chemicals have touched it. Nothing has been packaged and arranged and put in plastic. It's, it's all the same thing. And the other thing is, you know, going with the whole thing. Don't get the chicken all cut up. Buy the chicken whole. It's cheaper. And guess what? After that, you could have a whole meal. You can pick the meat off the bones for a second meal and mix it up with some beans and have mm-hmm. a burrito. You can take it to the, to the next place and that makes some fabulous bone broth heal your gut make a vegetable soup that everybody loves and now you've taken one lousy little chicken and made three meals out of it i mean you can't get cheaper than that you think people kind of um they like reading about the stuff they're like talking about the stuff but when it comes to action they always seem to have a couple excuses up their sleeves and that kind of for lack of a better word prevents them in their mind from actually making changes like I don't have the time or I don't have the money. They might know what to do, but those are almost a bigger preventer of them taking action than the knowledge itself. Um, and not to judge people, but I've definitely gotten emails where those are the two primary things. It seems people don't have time or they don't have money and they want to make these changes, but they just, it's not that they don't know how it's that they latch onto these, these time and money. They seem to be like these big swamping excuses. And so it kind of sounds like what you're saying is that the money one's not necessarily there anymore. 
Well, I don't think the money one's there. And also, you know, I think that I don't think the time one's there either because we all have 24, the same 24 hours and we do what's important to us. Those same people are also probably spending, you know, tons of time on something else. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, I don't know, figure, look at your time and, and, and do a time diary and see where you're spending your time. You know, there's always a way around it. I don't have time. Use a crock pot. I don't have time. Use a pressure cooker. I don't have time. Prepare in advance. When you have time, use that time for, for meal preparation. To me, this is, this is like learning about when you go to the dentist and the dentist says, you know, are you flossing your teeth? Yeah. And he'll say yeah. to you, <laughs> you know, only floss the ones you want to keep. And that's the same thing with, with eating healthy. When you're eating healthy, if, when you're eating at home, you're controlling absolutely every single ingredient that's going in there. There's not one possible ingredient that hasn't passed your okay. Yeah. That's one thing. And the second thing is, you know, the portion control. I mean, I was talking to um, a, a heart doctor just yesterday about this whole thing. And he was talking about portion control and how important that was because, you know, people just strap these crazy feed bags on and just go crazy, right? Sure. Well, one of the things is if you go to a restaurant, how do they serve your food? It's on a platter, a platter, not a plate, a platter. Platters are for eating family style, but we eat two and a half portions on these platters because, you know, we have no control over ourselves. So we control it when we're at home. Hmm. It's huge. Like what you said, though, about the floss, because going back to that, I went to the dentist once and they told me, you know, I was forever not a flosser. I just hated it. It was painful. You know, gums bleed. And of course, that means I needed to floss more. But right. then they gave me, what did they give me? They gave me those little like dinosaur dino flosses that are automatically uh, stringed for you. So it's that little yeah. hook and it's got the floss in there. And then. I love Oh, I love those. And now I floss way more than I used to because of those little hacks right there. And so I, I guess it, approaching it in a way that people are more able to do it and more accessible to them, like those dinosaur flosses, maybe it's something like a crock pot or maybe it's something like, um, you know, making meals in advance. Do you have any of those kind oh, of do. dino flosses for cooking? And what <laughs> are they? I love it. Yeah. yeah. One of the things is to make up meals in advance. So here's another thing too. Don't do it alone. Don't be the lone ranger in your kitchen. Bring your family aboard. Help them, have them help, you know, get your spouse to buy the groceries, get your kids into the kitchen to help put the salad together, put some meals in the freezer and Ziploc bags that all you have to do is just take them out, thaw them and then cook them up fresh. There's a million and one resources out there. You just have to avail yourself of them and decide that it's important enough for you. Okay. And then you do it. Yeah. So the prep thing seems to be like the biggest component to eliminate the time. Yeah, it is. I mean, prep can be, if, if you, especially if you don't know what you're doing in the kitchen right. and you don't understand, like there's this whole thing called mise en place. If you don't understand mise en place, and I, I bet you don't. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I, was, I was raising my hand for that one. Okay, don't, I'm don't know what you you're doing. Exactly. Okay. Mise en place is when you, it, it means everything in, in its place. So if you're getting ready to make, let's say you're making a skillet fish uh, dish mm -hmm. and you're going to have some steamed broccoli to go with it. Let's say that's your dinner. You get, you find one particular place on your countertop and you put your broccoli, you wash your broccoli and you put it there. You put a cutting board out. You put your skillet on the stove. You put your ghee or whatever it is that you're going to be cooking with. Get all your spices out and lay those all out, you know, with a measuring spoon or whatever mm -hmm. so that you're standing in one spot and you're boom, 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 getting it all done. Just like you're having your own show on TV. It's like a food network show. Everything is there and ready to go. When you take that extra minute to do that, then you're not pinging all over the kitchen yeah. like you know, a pinball. So you're not going, oh, here's the ghee over here, and then I'm going over here to get this, yeah. and I'm going over here to get that, and you're middle of doing something, and this starts to burn on the stove. No, you're standing all in one place. It's all in front of you, and you've taken that minute to do that, and then you can just knock it out like that. It's but, a really great hack. That's called mise en place? M yes. M-I-S. Mise en place. 
mise en place. Mise yes, en place. P-L-A-C-E, yeah. Okay. It's fabulous. That's, yeah. that's great because it seems to me from a very amateur cooking standpoint. I love cooking. I love time in the kitchen, but I've always viewed it as three different things. You know, there's the prep, there's the mm-hmm. actual act of cooking, and there's the cleaning up. And so you have right. those three things, and I love the middle one, but the first and the last one kind of drive me crazy, and so I don't even go through it. Yeah, well, so for your third one, yeah, is while you are at the very end of, of cooking everything, take a put hot sudsy water uh-huh. in in a sink and then dump everything that you just cook with into that hot sudsy water except the big knives so you don't cut yourself and then sit down and have your dinner then all of your stuff is sitting there in the sink it's been soaking and you just rinse it off and throw it in the dishwasher uh-huh. simple uh-huh. and then that way you're not like you know collecting all your stuff and the other thing with mise en place is that your stuff is all sitting right there so what i do is there's my big cutting board and I take all of my measuring utensils and implements and everything that I'm using. I just take that wooden board and I take it right over to the sink, dump it in. Mm-hmm. And then when it's time for cleanup, I just wipe down the area that I had my mise en place in, take the stuff that's out of the sink, throw it into the dishwasher, wash the other things by hand, and I can have cleanup done in, in a mere minutes. Mm. Boom. Boom. Because <laughs> do you get this like... I get stressed out. I can't eat my food if I know I have dirty dishes from what I just cooked. <laughs> no. Oh, you don't? <laughs> I think that's your own little weirdness. Sorry, Clark. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I get like panic I attacks. I want to hot. What's up? I said I want to eat it hot. I don't want to sit there and clean up while I'm doing that. Yeah, that's but then you got the dishes in the corner calling your name and you know you have to go clean them up eventually. Maybe that is just my weird thing because I, I legitimately get stressed out if I have dirty dishes. But if you have a hot soapy sink that you can throw everything in and now it's all collectively sitting there soaking. Uh-huh. So that once your meal is done, you're just going to pop all those things and rinse them off and throw them in the dishwasher. It's super easy and it's going to give you a hot meal. And plus, if you've got anybody over at your house... They're yeah. not going to be going, come on, Clark, let's eat dinner. That's what they do. That's they what they do. do. I'm the cook. Cause, true, yeah. by the way, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my mama finger at you. You don't want to have your guests sitting there going, come on, let's eat dinner, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, so we got the mise en place hack. We got the, the time hacks. We got the prep hacks. Do you have any other big cooking tips that you just love and to give to people and you can't wait to tell them because you're so excited about this thing that's going to change the way they cook? Well, I mean, I'm teaching people how to cook right now. I mean, I've do- I've done it for years. I'm now doing it formally with C school. That's my biggest hack. And what I've done is I've taken all of how to cook. You know what? There's 8 million how to cook books out there. Yeah. Have you noticed though? They're about 18 inches thick Yes. and they're full of all con- kinds of nonsense that you're never going to do. Mm-mm. What most people want to know is how do I get a meal on the table? So my big thing is I want to teach you how to use a knife correctly. And when I'm talking knife, I'm not talking these little tiny baby knives. I'm talking big old French knives like you see on the cooking shows on TV. Yeah. How do you set correctly? How do you keep it sharp? Um, how do you care for it? Um, different things like how to use herbs and spices and how to make your own spice blends. Things like how to dry roast, how to do um, saute kale so that it's really t- delicious and easy, how to braise things. Those different things that people don't know how to do. Chiffonade. Can you tell me what chiffonade is? No, I'm giving you a quiz. <laughs> Yeah, it's just all chiffonade is is like if you got lots of basil leaves, is taking all those basil leaves, rolling them together like you're making a big cigar, and taking a pair of scissors and snipping them into ribbons. That's mm-hmm. called chiffonade, and it's lo- it's a lovely way to deal with a lot of herbs and do it quickly at one time and keep them from being bruised by using a knife. So just little little tiny things like that that make just such a difference in your cooking. It makes it faster and it makes it better. So if I go to C school, I can host dinner parties and impress all my friends. Uh, yeah, because that's our last module is entertaining, and I'm gonna because here's the thing: you want to learn how to feed yourself, you want to know how to feed your family, you want to be able to do it quickly, mm-hmm. efficiently, and well. You want to be able to serve it all up hot, all at the same time, 
And at the end of the day, we all want to be able to be hospitable to our family and friends and invite them over for a good home cooked meal. Yeah. Right. And I'll show you how to do all of it and make your table look pretty too. Yeah. Bonus. <laughs> One one of the biggest things I struggle with in terms of cooking, is, not so much anymore, but a, about a year ago or so, um, let me plug my computer in while I'm finishing this thought, was just kind of the intimidation factor of um, especially knife skills and just navigating the kitchen and I- feeling... Yeah, and feeling like, because it is a skill, you know, we talk about knife skills, and you're using a tool to accomplish a task, and if you don't do it well, it comes out wrong, but if you do it well enough, it's right, and so you got to navigate that whole knife skill um, scenario, and so do you have any tips for just using kitchen tools, but in particular knives? Um, Yeah, I mean, avail yourself of some good tools, Um, well, for... Let's talk about other things besides knives. Like, for example, a food processor. Mm-hmm. You want to get a quick soup together? Nothing does it quicker than a food processor. You can get all those vegetables chopped in mere minutes and get them into the, you know, into the soup pot and voila, you've got soup in no time. Um, I love microplanes. I think microplanes are so awesome. You can zest a lemon or a lime really quickly or an orange. You can take a little nutmeg and do fresh nutmeg and and grate it on a microplane. You can do any kind of a nut on there. It's really lovely. You can do dark chocolate and have a beautiful, like some fresh berries with some dark chocolate on it and some cold coconut milk. It's incredible. It's that, so, it's, are- it's that small little cheese grater looking thing, right? That it's single one? It's a cheese one? grater looking thing, but it's okay. really super tiny. Yeah. yeah I love yeah. that thing. And I love garlic presses mm-hmm. because who wants to be sitting there chopping a bunch of garlic? I don't. So mm-hmm. a garlic press, you put the, the clove in, boom, it's done. Okay. You know, and we love to use fresh garlic because it has allicin in it, which allicin is the component that has all the antibacterial products. And I mean, um, um, components in it. You know that allicin is is actually, and I'm sure you know this, is 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 just as effective as an antibiotic. So it's nature's antibiotics, but it takes a minute for it to develop. So we press it, we give it a minute, and then it's active. It's mm. an active ingredient in there. And the other thing that I love, of course, is using knives correctly. And that would be, I love the French knife and the Santaku in particular, which is the Japanese version of a French knife. Yeah. It has a slightly curved, you've seen them, they're beautiful, and they have little little dimples on the side. Those little dimples on the side make everything, make all the food just fall apart, yeah. fall away from the knife. So yeah. I love that. So cooking gear, especially top-notch stuff, brand new, can get really expensive. Whether it be we're investing it in the pots that are you know, Teflon-free and stainless steel-free or whatever and skillet-made and they're hundreds and hundreds of dollars just for one or the Japanese knives with the dimples that are like $300 for one. Do you have anywhere people should allocate their money first if they're trying to stock their kitchen with the right tools and where should that be? Well, I mean, I would say start with a good knife. And, um, you know, I've actually bought knives at Costco. Um, they have a Hinkle set that's very reasonably priced. It's not the top of the line, chef's grade mm-hmm. Hinkles, but it's certainly a good set. And I would say that's a, that's a good place to start. What does that um, what does that go for? Do you know off the top of your head? Oh, it's about a hundred about two hundred dollars for that knife block. And but, how how does that compare to other knives? Well, like I said, you can buy a three hundred dollar chef's knife, but yeah. And I, I have done that yeah. and I actually bought, you know, I bought mine years and years and years ago. Um, and it's a beautiful knife, except there's a big chunk missing out of it. I don't know how that happened. I have a feeling a, a kid got a hold of it and used it for something, but Dog I still it. have it, you know, I yeah. still have it and it's a beautiful knife and it still works well, even with the chunk out of it. But I also have used my set of Henkels that I had from Costco because it's just a good set of knives. And if you keep it sharp, you know, and that's the main thing is you have to have a steel. Um, not having a steel means that you have do not have sharp knives. Not having sharp knives means you have unsafe knives because mm. it's not mm. sharp knives that cause problems. It's unsharp knives. Okay, so the duller your knife, the more risky it is. So you really want yeah. okay. 
because that seems kind of counterintuitive to what people would first go for they'd say it's such a sharp knife so i'm gonna hurt myself but is, is it the dullness of it that makes it slip around and you're more likely yeah, it to- slips it'll slip off of um, something and and you know like if you're if you're chopping an onion and it's not it's not hot you know you're it'll slip and your yeah. hand will slip and there you go there's a there's a cut hmm when putting together C school and the class where you teach people how to cook and you take them through and show them things, what was kind of the biggest shocker you discovered in putting this whole thing together? Did you learn anything really cool or any big lessons that came from it or anything? Well, we, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got our first, we've got our first, um, beta class in there right now. We have the very first class in there. Um, it, it was crazy because I was shocked to see that people really wanted the, the first module was, was a simple one of setting up your kitchen for success. Mm-hmm. And I went through and I showed, did a whole video tour of my kitchen and I showed the pantry. I showed the organization of just every, you know, most of the drawers. I opened most of the drawers. I showed my spice cabinet. I showed my refrigerator and my freezer. And you know what? <laughs> I was shocked that that I got so many questions about that and what do I do? But what do I do in my kitchen? And they take pictures and show me pictures of their kitchen. And what I would see is the same disorganized stuff, and but they didn't see their own stuff. And I'd say, well, you know, for starters, let's put those pots and pans away. And let's put the, you've got a few jars of things. Can you put those away somewhere? And our, they'd open up cupboards, and I said, but are you using all of that? And we'd talk about these different things. And it was just <clears throat> the importance of starting with something as, as very basic as getting your kitchen set up is, I mean, it's like laying the foundation for the house. Yeah. So I, I took it for granted, and I just kind of went through it, and I didn't think much of it. But the feedback that we got on it and how important it was, and can you help me with this? Um, I was really, I was quite surprised about that. Well, me's on place. They got it now. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Good stuff. They loved that too. That was a biggie for everybody. So, okay. So setting up your kitchen and getting it, um, in there, what do you think is like the most popular recipe you've put out either in C school or saving dinner? What's kind of the most trafficked, uh, post on your site um, that people go to, or you get the most feedback from? Well, by far the biggest um, recipe, the most Googled, the most, you know, talked about one is garlic lime chicken. And it is a phenomenal recipe that I made up um, probably 15 years ago. And you look like you're drinking wine. Is that wine? No, it's a, <laughs> it's a glass vel- violet <laughs> bottle. I know I get that all the time. My, my wine's actually up there. I got some good, yeah, there you go. good Trader you, Joe's. You should, you should put Chateau de, you know, whatever on there just for fun. <laughs> yeah, right here. The Paleo Hacks Cheers. Brew. Cheers. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with all oh, of that. Oh, garlic lime chicken. Most popular yeah, it's, post. It's, it is absolutely fantastic. It's a delicious recipe. It's, it is paleo, just, you know, not by, not by uh, design, but it, it, it absolutely is. Mm-hmm. Lots of spices. It's a skillet recipe. It's very quick. You deglaze the pan with a little butter, a little chicken stock, and a little lime juice, and it makes a fabulous sauce. Mm. Mm. Cooking's like kinda chemi- cooking is chemistry. It's not kind of like chemistry. It's amazing that um, you can add just one or two ingredients – Like chicken or lime or garlic by themselves taste totally different than they do together. And they create something totally different in a pan if you heat it versus if you boil it versus if you, I don't know, microwave it, you know? Like, absolutely. It it all, every single factor changes the outcome. It's true. That's that's a great observation. And, And, you know, it's one of the reasons why, like, for example, vegetables are a good thing to talk about. You steam some vegetables versus roasting them. You know the difference in the in the flavor and and you know at the end of the day, what is cooking anyway? But it's it's really bringing all the sugars, the natural sugars that are in vegetables or meats, to the surface, sure. so that it makes it taste better. Sure, sure. Yeah. Who who's your friend in the background? I feel like I should say hi. She's been there the whole oh. time. <laughs> oh, that's Jan Martin. She works with me. Okay, hi Jan. I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> She looks so happy. She's enjoying the enjoying the show. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Good. So is everyone else at home. So C school, we're coming up on time. I really want to hit this. 
Um, if someone's interested in, in C school, what can they expect from the program? What would they, who's the person that should take the program and what would they walk out with? Well, anybody who's afraid of cooking and they think that it's just, it's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too fill in the blank. Those are the people who need to, you know, kind of unravel the mystery of, of cooking and I'll show them and take them there step by step and show show them that two things, it's, it's not brain surgery. And the other thing is it's not a chore. It really is a creative outlet. So anybody who, who just doesn't really feel like they have a good grip on their cooking skills and even for people who feel like they do know how to cook, Mm -hmm. but they just don't feel organized. They don't feel like they get it done quickly enough. And, um, I can show you hack after hack after hack. We have a whole module on, we should have called it hacks, but we call it shortcuts. <laughs> and we have a whole, because I am the queen of shortcuts. Let me tell you something. I don't, I love to cook, but I don't want to spend all day in the kitchen, you know, right. let's get it done and right. let's enjoy the result, you know? Yeah. And then the other person, anybody who is interested in just saying, you know, I feel like I can get dinner on the table. I feel like I, I've got this with my family. But I just, the idea of entertaining really scares me. I say take C-School because we, even though we start from the beginning, we end with entertaining. And that is where people are starting. They're already going bonkers on that one right now. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the entertaining aspect where you can share it. Yes. It's kind of like your graduation party. It is your graduation party. You throw You're it for now yourself. chef of your own house. Yeah. So aside from C school, um, being in saving dinner and immersed in the cooking world, any people you follow or resources that you love? Mm, gosh, well, I love paleo hacks. You know that <laughs> have for years. <clears throat> I follow a lot of different people. I mean, um, there's there's a lot of folks out there. I, I'm a huge Alice Waters fan. Okay. Um, I like to I like to throw it back and go old school. You know. Um, yeah. And of course, they're the queen of butter herself, Julia Childs. I love her. I mean, she just, Julia Child um, really defined cooking and the whole um, sort of the love of cooking. And I think I really am grateful for her and her, her just absolute devotion to the art of um, putting a meal together and enjoying it and eating it and, and relishing it. Sure. Um, even, you know, Slap me silly if you want to, but Martha Stewart, God bless her. Yeah. You know, Martha, you know, she came she came to the rescue when the domestic arts, so to speak, were kind of falling apart. And, you, you know, you can say what you want about her, and I'm not 100% sold on everything she's done. But I will tell you, um, I've owned her entertaining book since um, the 80s. So I've had it for eons, mm. absolute eons, when it first came out. So I, I do admire her. Anyone who's popular will always get criticism, and if the more popular they get, the more in in it is to almost critique them, and that they're so mainstream, and you don't follow them, so you're cooler than everyone else. But if it's information and it's good, it shouldn't matter who it's coming from. And uh, yeah, everything might not be sound and paleo or whole food or organic based, but you know, if it's if it's good information and you learn from it, I think it's ridiculous to try and criticize something because mainstream like that. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Well, cool, Leanne. Um, aside from C School, where else can the Paler Hackers go to find out more about you and what you do? Um, they go to savingdinner.com. They're going to find out all kinds of stuff. We've got all kinds of really fun paleo happenings, 30 day paleo challenge. We've got, of course, we've got our premium menu mailer that has um, paleo options on it. So, you know, we, we're all about feeding people, and making sure they get what they need. Cool. Leanne, yeah. thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much, Clark.